we're going to start today adding the eyes to your face jug. Um, one of the first things that you want to do is try to figure out where you want your face to be on um, your actual form. So if you're trying to disguise a seam, putting the face over the top of it is probably a really good idea because you're going to be doing a lot of modeling on the face and that will cover up any imperfections that are left on the surface. And then that leaves the back of it kind of nice and smooth. If you did the overlapping technique, you might want to have that overlap be on the back of your piece. So just be mindful of where you want to put your face. Either have um, it cover up a blended seam or um, think about the overall design of your piece when it's finished and where you want the seam versus the face to be. You're gonna start with a piece of clay about the size of a golf ball and you're going to be using a coil technique to create the eyes. So when I start the eyes, I'm gonna pinch off a, just a little section of it roll that in my hands until it gets to be a nice smooth sphere and then I'm going to do a coil. When you're rolling a coil you want to use just the fingers of your hand. You don't want to use the palm of your hand because it's a little too heavy. So you roll with your fingers and as you're rolling if it gets a little bit out of round like this one is beginning to look more like an oval than a circle when viewed in the cross section. Then you can take your fingers and just kind of pat it down a little bit on that side and then continue rolling. So you're gonna roll this out until it's about the width of a pencil, maybe a little bit smaller. I don't know if you can see that pretty well, but it's about the diameter, I said width before, that was bad. Um, I should have said diameter, it's about the diameter of a pencil. Then with your Fetley knife, you're going to cut small sections of this coil and you're gonna need four that are the same size. The size kind of depends on your personal preference, but I think if you use a measurement like the, the knuckle on your finger, if it's about as long as the distance on your index finger here. You could do that, be a good place to start. So I'm gonna cut four of those. And it's really important that these are about the same size, both in terms of their length and in terms of the diameter. I'm gonna set my extra clay to the side and work just with these four pieces. So what you're gonna do to make the eyes is kind of construct them on your workspace before you set them on your face jug. And what you do is put two together and then just kind of pinch it on the ends. See that? Okay. I'll do the same thing on the other one. Doing them at the same time ensures that both of your eyes are gonna be about the same size. Now they're not ever gonna be exactly the same, so just like real people, your two eyes are never exactly the same. There's always a little bit of difference. So now I've got two eye shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and make the pupil for the eye. And I'm gonna use that same coil and I'm gonna cut off just a couple of pieces off of that coil that are again about the same size. And if you wanna measure that, you could just kind of guess it's gonna be about as wide as the opening of the eye. Okay, and then you're just gonna roll those around in your hand until they're little circles. And then you got your two eyes. Now, that's only half of it because then what you're going to do is attach them to the side of your face jug and then you're gonna be doing some modeling. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna look at the side of my face jug and I wanna leave room up here for eyebrows. And so I'm just gonna score right there so I can remind myself that I'm gonna have eyebrows there. And then I'm gonna have a nose. And then I'm gonna have a mouth. So it's almost like a capital I on the side of your face jug. If you wanna go ahead and just kind of score that in to remind yourself of what's going on here. 
And then your eyes are going to be over here on each side. So you could go ahead and score that. And then go ahead and apply some slip. I like to do both sides at the same time so that I don't get things looking too different. Okay, then I'm just going to set that on there. Kind of press down and do the same thing on the other side. One of the things that's really important, if you're pressing at all, you want to make sure to support, your, support the inside of your piece with your hand. So I'm pressing that down. but I'm supporting it on the inside so I don't crush my jug. Okay, now that looks okay, but to me it looks a little too uh, primitive. And what I want you to do for this um, project is to practice some modeling skills. So to make the eye look a little more realistic, you're gonna be using your modeling tool and you want to choose the small end and you're just gonna drag this across the outside edge of your coil. That's going to blend in the seam that's on the outside. Then you can take your finger and finish smoothing it. Do you see the difference between the two? So this one has not been blended and this one has. So again, supporting the inside of my piece, I'm going to use the blending tool and just blend the outside edge to smooth out that. And I can take my finger and finish smoothing. There's still some slip on the inside, so then I can just quickly place my eyeball in there and press down. So you can see you have a pretty realistic looking eye, all things considered, with just a little bit of modeling. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, obviously. You'll smooth out the edges, place the eyeball that you've already created on the inside when you're done. And then to finish off the actual eyeball, you're going to want to use some kind of tool to make the pupil. And the round modeling tool works really well for that. So you can make a little hole there in the center. In sculpture, areas that are deeper will read as darker values. Areas that are higher will read as lighter values. You can also do a little touching up if you want to with your modeling tool. You can change the expression uh, by squeezing the eye together a little bit or opening it up more if you want it to look surprised.